Hey, Hancock. So, seems you know how to hold your own. I'd had my doubts when we first hit the road. Uh, thanks. You're not so bad yourself. I never get many complaints. It's just real rare these days. Find someone who's not willing to take things the way they're handed to them. Too many good folks not willing to get their hands dirty. And too many assholes taking advantage of it. Look at what happened at Diamond City. Before McDonough took over, it was a half-decent place to live. A little stricter than I usually go for, but not terrible. I thought he and I had a pretty happy childhood. But then he decides he's gonna try and get elected with his anti-ghoul crusade. Mankind for McDonough. Before you know it, you got families with kids lining up to drag folks they call neighbor out of their homes and throw them to the ruins. You and McDonough knew each other as kids? Oh yeah. Guy's my brother. Grew up together in a little shack on the waterfront. Guy was a standard big brother. Entitled. Punchy. Liked to shove rotten potatoes down my shirt and slap my back. But I never thought he'd be capable of something like what they did to those ghouls. Why did McDonough campaign against the ghouls? Because he thought he could win. There'd always been a pretty clear divide between the folks living in the stands and those down on the field. I'm not convinced they didn't do it just to improve their view. I remember storming into his office above the stands after the inauguration speech. He was just standing there, staring out the window, watching as the city turned on the ghouls. He didn't even look at me. Just said, I did it, John. It's finally mine. Should have killed him right there, but I don't think it would have changed anything. Instead, I pleaded with him, begged him to call it off. He said he couldn't. He had nothing against the ghouls. He was just carrying out the will of the people. And he couldn't betray the voters. And then he smiled. That hideous fucking mile-long smile. He never smiled like that when we were kids. I didn't even recognize him. What do you mean you didn't recognize him? I don't know, just didn't seem like the guy I grew up with. Guess that all makes sense now, knowing that he was with the Institute. But honestly, I think I'm more angry now. I mean, where do I draw the line? Was the guy I grew up with the amoral piece of trash who gave the ghouls the boot? Or was that just some synth making a play for the city? Have I been hating the guy all these years for nothing? Almost makes me wish I didn't know. At the time, though, I just couldn't wait to get away from him and his whole damn constituency. Of all the things I've seen since leaving the vault, this seems almost merciful. Sure. No one got beheaded. At first. I still wasn't a ghoul at this point, so I didn't have to leave. But I couldn't bring myself to stay in that cesspool after that. I'd been sneaking off the good neighbor for years to get decent chems, so I knew the safe routes. I managed to track down a couple of the families, lead them there, but most couldn't get used to the good neighbor lifestyle. I brought them food for a couple of weeks, but after a while, they just disappeared. Folks in Diamond City signed their death warrants, and all the good people were willing to just sit by and watch. I felt like I was the only one who saw how screwed up things truly were, who couldn't just pretend things were fine. Still feel that way. Or, I did. Until I met you. I know I run my mouth, but having someone who sees the world for what it is, and is willing to do something about it, it's meant a lot to me. I feel damn lucky to have you as a friend. You're not going soft on me, are you, Hancock? Hey, everyone's entitled to some softness. For me, it's pretty much everything below the eyebrows. Well, thanks for hearing me out. You probably weren't looking for a history lesson, were you? You wanna hit the road?